I happened to be on CSS Tricks the other day, and when I saw this animated card list, I thought, wow, that's a cool CSS trick. So in today's beginner-friendly tutorial, we're going to reverse engineer this UI element using nothing but HTML and CSS. Over the next few minutes, you'll learn how to combine both grid and flexbox layout to position the cards. We'll use transforms and shadows to make it look like the cards are stacked on top of each other. We'll implement some transition animations, and I'll throw in a few other tricks like a gradient text background and SVG styles for this little semicircle under the avatar. If you're new here, like and subscribe, and you can find the full source code for this project on GitHub and follow along with the write-up on Fireship I we're going to build this feature step by step from scratch, so pull up your editor and create a file called card.css and index.html. In your HTML, type an exclamation point followed by tab to create the initial boilerplate. Then in the head of the document, type in link to access the snippet for a CSS link, and then point it to your card.css file. In the body of the document, we'll add a section. This will be the main container for the card list. Then each individual card will be represented by an article element. We'll add a header to each individual card, then later in the video we'll come back and add an avatar and some tags. Now rather than target these elements directly, I'm going to add a class name to each element. Then I'm going to copy and paste our markup so we have multiple cards to work with. And just a friendly reminder, it's much easier to copy and paste this markup from GitHub. Now one quick thing I want to point out is that instead of a section, article, and header, I could have just called all of these elements divs. This would work perfectly fine, but when you write HTML, you want to use semantic elements where you can. Or in other words, use elements that clearly define what the content is all about. In any case, we can open up our HTML by right-clicking on the file and clicking copy path. And we can paste that into the browser, and you should get a result that looks like this. And now we're ready to start implementing some CSS tricks. At the top of the file, I'm going to import a Google font, then I'll add some global styles to the body tag, like a dark background, and setting that font family as the default font. And our UI is already looking much better. Currently, the cards are flowing vertically, but we want them to flow horizontally. We can make that happen by setting display flex on our card list, which by default will place the items into a row. In other words, it'll take all the cards in the list and adjust their width according to the available space in the container. We call that a flexible row, and of course you can learn more about it in my 100 seconds of Flexbox video. And then we'll add a little bit of padding to that container as well. That takes care of our row. Now we can think of each individual card as a column within that row. So we'll also give that a display of flex. We'll set its position to relative, and then the flex direction to column to make any content inside the card flow vertically. We want each card to have the same height and width so we can use fixed pixel values there. Then we'll set the min width to 250. If we have a bunch of cards in the container, we don't want them to get squeezed too small. Instead, we'll let them flow to their minimum width, and then we'll let the overflow scroll horizontally. Now our cards are in a scrollable container, but it's hard to tell when one card finishes and the next one starts. One subtle yet powerful way to address that is to give each card some shadow. First, we'll use border radius to round the edges, then we'll give it a background color, and then we can set a box shadow, and notice how the first value is negative. This little trick will put the shadow on the right side of the box, which makes the card on the right look like it's hovering above the card on the left. That's because that first value represents the horizontal offset of the shadow. But notice how the scroll bar on the card list is really ugly. Let's go ahead and address that now. We'll want to set its overflow x property to scroll, and then we have three pseudo elements that we can style. We can give the scroll bar itself a width and height of 10 pixels. Then the scroll bar thumb is the thing the user actually drags around. We'll give it a background, radius, and we'll give it a box shadow with an inset value, which puts the shadow on the inside of the element. And lastly, we have the scroll bar track, which will give a background with a linear gradient. And now our scroll bar is much nicer looking, but just keep in mind that the scroll bar pseudo elements aren't supported on every browser, so don't expect this to look good on every device. And that brings us to the next trick, the animation when we hover over the cards. Watch the animation closely. When we hover over a card, it moves up by a few pixels, then all of the siblings that come after it move to the right, while all of the siblings before it stay put. We'll start by grabbing the card that's actually hovered by using the hover pseudo selector. We'll then use transform to move or translate that card along the y-axis by negative one rem. That will move it in an upward direction equal to the root font size, which is about 15 pixels in our case. That's easy enough, but the tricky part here is selecting all of the children that come after the hovered card. When a card has focus or when it's hovered, we'll use the tilde character to select all of the elements that are siblings that come after it with the card class. It's called the general sibling combinator, and it grabs all of the children after the element, but not the element itself or any of the siblings before it. After selecting those elements, we can then use transform to translate or move those elements across the x-axis by 130 pixels. 
And as a final touch, we need to grab every card element that's not the first child in the list and set its margin left to negative 130 to offset the transformation. Otherwise, there will be a big gap in between the cards. Not is called the negation pseudo class. It basically does the opposite of whatever you're telling it to do. Or in our case, grab every card that is not the first card. At this point, things are looking pretty good, but there's no timing in the animation, so it looks really jerky. We can address that by simply adding a transition for 0.2 seconds in this case to the card class. Now, whenever a property value changes on the card, it will take 0.2 seconds to translate between the old value and the new value. That takes care of the main card stack, but I still have a few more tricks up my sleeve. What I want to show you next is how we can add an avatar along with this semicircle underneath it. To get that started, we'll need to go back into our HTML, then inside the card class below the header, we'll add a div for the card author. Inside of that element, we'll add a link for the author avatar, and inside that link, we'll add an image tag that points to an image I recently added to the project. This can be any image that you want. Now, in order to add a half circle border to the image, we need to add an SVG graphic below it. You'll wanna just copy this value from the main source code, but basically it's just a single SVG graphic with a path of a half circle. And then below that, we'll add another div with the author name as well as an author name prefix to add some additional styling there. Currently, everything looks very out of whack, so let's head back into our CSS code. Currently, the card author lives inside of a flex column, but there's no reason we can't make this element a grid to display the elements inside of it. So that's exactly what we'll do here by setting display to grid. We have the avatar image on the left side, and we want that container to always be 75 pixels. So we can set the grid template columns property to 75 for the first column, and then one fractional unit for the next column to make that column responsive. Then we'll align the grid items to the center and add some margin to it. From there, we can move on to the image element inside of the author avatar div. We'll wanna make sure it's display block because images are inline by default. We'll give it a fixed width and height and then set the border radius to 50% to make it appear as a circle. Then if you want to turn it into a black and white image, you can use filter along with the grayscale value set to 100%. That puts the image in the right place, but now we need to move our SVG underneath it. We can target the SVG directly with our half circle class and we'll set its position to absolute. This allows us to move it anywhere within the grid area. So let's move it to the bottom left. We can define the width and height, but it's currently displayed as a black half circle. What we actually wanna do is remove the fill color from the shape. So we set the fill property to none. Then we give it a border by defining the stroke property. The stroke has a color width and a line cap value, which when set to round, will give it a rounded edge. Then as a final touch, we'll style the author name prefix class to a bold light gray color. That takes care of our avatar section, and now we're ready for the final trick, which answers the question, how do we apply a CSS gradient to text? Unfortunately, it's not as easy as just targeting the color property. When we try to apply a linear gradient to color, you can see that nothing happens. What we actually need to do is set the background of the element, then use the shape of the text to clip the background. Let's go ahead and change the color property to background, and then we'll set the text shadow to none. Then we'll use background clip to use the text shape to essentially cut out the background. We also need to use the WebKit vendor prefix for background clip and text fill color set to transparent. This will allow the background color to flow through the text shape. And now we have this cool gradient effect when we hover over a header in the card. Just keep in mind that browser support for this particular trick is fairly limited. I'm gonna go ahead and wrap things up there. If this video helped you, please like and subscribe. And if you want access to more advanced full stack content, consider becoming a pro member at Fireship.io. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.